So I don't live in my car anymore. But don't click off and unsubscribe just yet because I want to explain what happened because a lot of the obstacles I faced were very situational. So the situation might still be right for you. So I find myself here in a cute little flat back in Sydney with just me and my partner and it is a dream. So why did I trade the road life for paying rent again? Well, hear me out. Number one, costs. So you would think living in a car is a lot cheaper than paying rent, but I genuinely think in my situation that wasn't true. So the main cost for us really was petrol, and petrol started out reasonably priced when we first started living on the road, but then within a couple of months, um, particularly because of the war in Ukraine, petrol prices really shot up. Um, so we were paying at least like $150 for a tank of petrol per week. And my car is an old 2009 Jeep Cherokee, which is definitely not the most fuel efficient car. The other thing as well is just general um, inflation in Australia has been all over the headlines recently. So all the costs of goods and services have just been steadily increasing. So the savings that I had that I started out with should have lasted me a lot longer, but they were drained really quickly, particularly with the prices of food. Also, let's not forget that the world is still in a global pandemic and so many things have changed because of it. Um, we struggle struggled to find free campsites because a lot of the campsites that were free now because of the pandemic every national parks campsite even if it was free now requires a six dollar booking fee and there's a time limit of how long you can stay there um, so that they can I guess regulate how many people are there so they can be socially distanced. They really didn't leave us a lot of options for those beautiful sweeping views of like free gorgeous places in nature to stay in like we'd hoped. Number two, the weather. This year also has turned out to be the wettest year on record in the whole east coast of Australia with like constant downpour and flooding that we have, I've never experienced before in my life. Like my area personally where my parents live was flooded, which never happens. So that has definitely been a huge factor for us. No matter where we went, we couldn't avoid the rains because of this La Nina weather event that was just hitting the entire east coast of Australia. We did consider moving west, but anything to get west would have been a really long drive and petrol prices again was really stopping us from wanting to do any really long drives. So I would have loved, loved, loved spending more time outdoors in nature. Um, and we did that for the first couple of weeks. Um, but then our kind of mood and motivation was totally shut down by the constant downpour. And we really just had to um, bunker down in libraries, shopping centers, and full disclosure, we even had to like stay with our parents for a little while at times because the rain was just so incessant. There were times when we spent like, a bit of extra money to pay for accommodation, um, but that also added to the, the price increase and it just like totally restricted what we could be doing with our time. Um, and it was, it was really a buzzkill. It also meant that our main source of income, which was holding markets, um, like outdoor markets with a gazebo and everything and selling jewelry for my partner's business, um, that was just canceled most of the time. And it started out really well. And on a good day, we would make a couple hundred dollars and that would last us, you know, through the week. And there would be, like ideally, there should be markets every weekend if we go around to all the different ones in the area. But with the rain, whether it's on or not, like we wouldn't make any profit if it is on. And most of the time it would just be canceled because the grounds and the grass would just be flooded out. Number three is food. So my car, which is a reasonably sized SUV, but fitting two people really didn't allow for a lot of room for like cooking and food storage equipment. So we had a little esky in the back, but because it was raining all the time, it wasn't very convenient for us to like get out of the car, get to the back, find our food in there. And there wasn't really anywhere for us to sit and eat. So a lot of the time we ate at restaurants or cafes. We tried to get the absolute cheapest sandwich we could or if we would go to the supermarket, we'd have to get stuff that was ready to eat, like very easy for us to just throw it together and not require cooking or anything. 
Um, so that really restricted where we could go because we had to stay close to supermarkets or cafes and um, if we did want to go into the middle of nowhere we wouldn't have food that would last us very long. At first we did start really with just having cereal out of bowls but even then that really wasn't too glamorous and not very sustainable because there wasn't really um, anywhere for us to sit and eat it. Um, let alone to like wash up everything and let it dry in the car. Number four is toilet amenities. So the other thing that bound us to staying really close to built up areas was our need for toilet and shower amenities. And for that, we really relied on our Anytime Fitness gym memberships because we do get access um, to any club wherever they are. We did try to use um, public toilets as much as possible if there was like a car park near a beach or something, but they tend to be locked in the middle of the night and quite early at night as well, sometimes as early as 6 p.m. So if, you know, if we wanted to go pee at 8 o'clock before we go to bed, honestly, most of the time that would have to be done in the bushes, which I got really good at, um, but that's not really something that I wanted to be doing long term. Number five is general comfort. God, I missed having a couch. <laughs> We got so exhausted at the end of our days or even halfway through our days because we would rise with the sun. Um, it would get very hot very quickly as soon as the sun started beating down on my black car. So we would rise quite early and we'd be moving all day because there wasn't really much room or space to relax in my car. So we'd be walking around, especially on a sunny day, we'd be going around to different beaches, finding stuff to eat. Um, and then we'd just get exhausted from moving all day and not really having a place to sit and relax. Um, we did find park benches and whatnot, um, but it really wasn't a place that we could sit for a long time, especially when the weather started to turn. Um, if it was sunny, it would be sunny for like a grand total of 10 minutes and then we'd have to go find somewhere to take shelter. But not only like a place to relax, but I really missed having a place to just spread out and call my own and decorate it and fill it with things that make me happy. Um, the nesting urge is real. But also with two people, like I mentioned before, with all of our clothes and our hobby equipment, skateboards, surfboards, just to like think, have things to do to keep us happy, there was so little space in the car. It, it did feel quite cramped and we really had to prioritize what it was that we could fit with us and bring with us, which on the one hand is really good practice to not you know, be hoarders later in life. But on the other hand, it did get quite stressful and we had to really forego a lot of things that we really wanted. Now it's not like I would never live in the car again, nor do I recommend against it for other people. Like I had a really great time and some really great memories um, and the sense of freedom is just fantastic. But the timing for me really was the worst. Um, in terms of just like the political state of the world, the economy in Australia, the weather, everything really did stack up against us. I know that sounds like me complaining, but we really did give it our best go. Um, but our financial state and the stress that we were having in not being able to support ourselves much longer, we decided to put a stop for it temporarily. Like I still kept, I did put the seats back in my car um, but I kept the mattress and the seats fold flat so whenever we do want to go on a long-term road trip again or even just camping again, I am so ready to do that. Like I had such a good time, but there are a couple of things I would need for the conditions to be right. For example, in future, I would want to have a home to come back to, to, to know that I have the space to keep all my other stuff that I don't have to forego. Um, having things that I really want because there's half of me that does want to go out and adventure and live rough and um, you know pee in bushes and it's all fun and games but then there's also the other half of me that wants to be fancy and have nice things and be comfortable and relaxed um, and you know be financially comfortable and stable also I would definitely want to make sure that the weather's going to be good and that, uh, that the petrol cycle is like stably low I am currently working from home at, temporarily at a job, uh, just taking calls and doing customer service. 
until I can start a job in finance. It's a nine to five job. Um, they'll be ready for me sometime in August to start. And I am a little bit wary um, of the nine to five life. Like I am wary of burnout. If you told me six months ago that I'd be getting um, a nine to five job, I would have dry retched at the idea. But here I am and my goals really have been focused on getting myself financially stable, having a nice house that I can call my own and you know fill it with things that make me happy and having a place I can do my hobbies and set up a life that I enjoy. We met the loveliest person that I've ever met um, in Wollongong. He lived in a van and he taught me that you can have a job as a means to an end and still enjoy your life as long as you do enough of what you love outside of work because that's what gives you life. So I'm determined not to let that slip. Um, but who knows, I might come back to you in six months time and say, God, nine to five life sucks. That was a big mistake. But at least I would have learned something. Anyway, so that's me. I really have had so much fun decorating my little place. Um, I am thinking of putting together a video of like a huge, just everything you need to know guide of living in your car because I definitely have learned a lot of things about the whole practicality of it, um, how to choose a good place to sleep, especially with the laws in Australia that were definitely a, uh, a bit of a boundary for us. So stay tuned if you wanna see that. Thank you for watching this video, I really appreciate it and I will see you next time.